Hey all, I got a really interesting demo to show today, and I think this is about taking a just kind of a standalone prompt that maybe it does a lot of complex things and really dramatically improving the accuracy of it and its result quality by dividing it up into kind of a series of, of agentic steps. So building an agentic workflow out of a prompt as opposed to hoping that a single prompt is going to achieve something successfully. Uh, so if I submit this little request and there's a chat going over here, I've demoed this interface a few times, but what I'm essentially trying to do is I built an agent that monitors a conversation and extracts long-term memory. And what I demoed previously was it was just one prompt that this information was going through where it had to identify key pieces of information, assign categories to it, and determine if we were kind of saving these things or updating or deleting it. And it was doing this all in one step and recording long-term memories. And that was really cool. It worked okay. Uh, but this is something that the human or the user doesn't see, you know, the user would really kind of just interact with a chatbot over here and not know that all this is happening behind the scenes. I built all of this for the sake of kind of a demo perspective. Um, but as a user, you know, I don't know if this is accurate or not. And so if we have a little bit of time in the background to be doing something and kind of improving accuracy, this is a really valuable step for us to do. Um, and not only is it going to kind of improve accuracy, but it's potentially like much less expensive. If we kind of break it up correctly, we can use uh, models that are more like a 3.5 model than a 4 model. So we can do something that will really increase accuracy and be slightly less expensive at the cost of just kind of, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, so what I did here, my wife and I are vegetarian. I broke up what used to be one prompt into a series. We've got a memory extractor, which is just... Uh, responsible for extracting the pieces of information from this that need to be stored. We have a chance for reflection in here, so the agent can reflect on its own work and see if it did a good job. And if it didn't, it'll you know try to repeat this step a few more times, and you know we can kind of cycle through memory extraction and review over and over again until we get to a satisfying result. Then we assign actions, so we determine that we need to create both of these because we didn't have these as memories. And then finally, we assign categories. So these are both categorized as attributes. And ultimately, once this step is done, we can save these long-term memories. Uh, so that's what we're going to be kind of discussing today. I'll share code for it if anyone's interested. But now I want to jump into kind of why, why I went down this path and where the inspiration came from. And this really came from you know, two weeks ago, Andrew Rang wrote a good post on really improving agentic workflows with these four methods of reflection, tool use, planning, and multi-agent collaboration. So he posted this. He also did a, this talk at Sequoia Capital. This video is on YouTube. I would check it out. It's really interesting and he's amazing. Um, so go watch this. But really, you know, at a high level, he points out these kind of four approaches to agentic reasoning. And by combining them, showing how much better the result quality can be at the end state of your kind of workflow. Uh, so the four he discusses are reflection, which is basically if you have not only an agent doing some work, but then an agent reflecting, reviewing that work, giving feedback back to the first one, allowing the first one to iterate it so they can kind of go back and forth together for a little while. And that reflection step will yield much better results over time. Uh, using tool use, that one's pretty obvious, but just being able to kind of, you know, work outside of its own knowledge base by interacting with some other, you know, either external data source or, you know, calculator, you know, whatever it is, uh, code review, it can kind of like access out additional tools. So that'll improve things. Planning is a really interesting one. So, you know, you'll notice you'll even improve an individual prompt by including some kind of planning steps within it. But if you actually break it up, like I'm going to show here, into multiple prompts, uh, those planning steps, you know, if you're executing each one of the step of the plan individually, it allows it to kind of put a little bit more thinking power behind it. Uh, so planning is important. And that's, I mean, being explicit with my planning, but you can also have an agent kind of determine its own plan and then execute the plan. So an agent could come up and devise its own plan, which is really interesting. And then finally, the multi-agent collaboration, but that's just, you know, having a lot of agents kind of coordinated together to achieve an outcome is another thing that's going to have better results. Um, and so this, he posted what their team had discovered, but just at a really high level, I mean, this is amazing, but using GPT 3.5, a zero shot approach, it's going to be right about half the time. If you increase to a better model, GPT 4, that same approach might now be right two thirds of the time. So it's much more accurate. 
uh, but there's still a lot of room for improvement up here. And what they determined is using a series of just different approaches of reflection, tool use, planning, multi-agent, they were able to get results in the, you know, 73% and plus. This looks like it's even at the 95% accuracy using a 3.5 model. And using four, they're also going to see similar results, but it almost is, you know, this is this is kind of tapping out. So it's interesting to see by combining these different results, we're just taking one, you can have much better quality. Um, so what I wanted to do was take my previous kind of zero shot attempts down here and apply a multi-agent workflow uh, to that same, same process. So here we go. Um, what I demoed previously, and go check that video out because I do think it was interesting kind of in just how it was set up, um, and it'll be a little bit more context for this conversation, but we had one step that just extracted memories, assigned actions to those, and assigned categories. And when it was done, we saved all that to the database. So, you know, you just had to kind of be like, fingers crossed, I hope this is, hope this is right. Um, the new approach I took today was building a whole memory agent that has the ability to not only be broken up into this kind of planning steps, but it can reflect on its own work. Uh, so I've kind of got three steps here. There's a the memory step, action step, category step. Um, so I now have kind of those, let's just say that there are three prompts. One is extracting memories, one's assigning actions to those memories, one is assigning categories to those memories. Only when those three things happen, then we update the database. Um, but I also have the ability for each one of these to exist within its own kind of reflection feedback loop. So once we extract memories, there's a memory checker that will review the quality of that and determine if anything is missing. It'll send that feedback back. The extraction will happen again with that feedback and hopefully kind of over time yield a slightly better result. And you can continue that forever if you want or just kind of bail when it's you know correct or after a certain number of attempts. And same thing, you could do that for each one of these steps. Uh, but for the sake of the demo, I I didn't put the checks in in the category for the, or I didn't check the actions or categories because I didn't have time for it. Um, and there is, I just kind of put it down here, like theoretically you could you could do it branching at every point. Um, so you could take different approaches to, you know, depending on how accurate you want it to be, we could go and so every one of these memories now is gonna go through one of these forks by itself. Uh, it's gonna start to get expensive. So you gotta be careful, you know, how, how crazy that's going to get. Um, so for the sake of the demo, I just kept it this kind of single path and I only had one one reflection step. So let's just say that's what we're that's what we're gonna demo today. And if you want to go look at the code, that's what you'll see. Uh, so that's our kind of much more sophisticated memory agentic workflow. And when if we go back to this and we say, all right, continue the conversation. All right, so we're both vegetarian. Any allergies you should be aware of, I'll say my wife can't eat mushrooms. Um, I also added, there's just like one more step. This one's kind of unnecessary and I would probably get rid of it. But um, when I was previously doing this and just doing zero shot with GPT-4, it's kind of expensive to run GPT-4 every time. So I added a really inexpensive sentinel ahead of it that just said, is there any information in it? If not, let's not go down the path of looking at it. Um, so if I just wrote, hey, it would determine there's no information there and bail. Um, if, if on the other hand, there is information, we go down the memory extraction route. So here we can see the memory extractor. It did its best. It said, wife can't eat mushrooms. It pulled that one out. The memory reviewer looked at it and said, the analysis is perfect. No change is needed. Let's move on to the assigner. So now we're going to add an action to it. So this is a create because that was not in our um, long-term memory previously. And then finally it assigns a category of an allergy. And so now once that's done, it'll update the database and now we have kind of more in, in our database now. Uh, so that's gonna be how it works. If I tried to write a whole bunch of things, let's clear our memory here. Um, if I go off to Texas, we have a garden, we mostly eat vegetarian. We'll see how it does. It contains information. It looks like it did a pretty good job pulling all that out. So actually that kind of nailed it and immediately. This is all gonna be correct that it's creating those actions. And it looks like it might've had an error in the background. Oh, nope, 
category assigner is happening here. So these are all attributes about me. So now it's just created those three attributes. So that's perfect. Um, so we can see just by breaking down the steps, I think it's going to be more accurate. The memory reviewer, I've had it catch a few things and kind of cycle back through a few times, but I don't know if that's even going to be as helpful as just, just the planning step seems to be really valuable. Um, and I've got a couple of different evals here. Let's see if any of them kind of catch anything interesting. But yeah, a lot of them, it's doing a good job of extracting the memory now in a way that previously it, it did not. Try another one. Okay, creating an attribute. Gluten-free options. I don't like coconut because it tastes like sunscreen. Okay, so here we've got a memory reviewer. This one is actually finally going to provide a little feedback and say, hey, you actually didn't leave enough context about this. Missing some additional context providing the original message. Rationale behind their dislike of coconut was not included. So it took that lesson and it now has a much more, <laughs> I don't know if this is necessary for a memory, but it's fun that it kind of learned that. Um, and so now it's going to be kind of creating and it would save all of that in you know, more detail. Uh, so that's its ability to kind of self-check. And if we want to go in and see how it works, uh, the, this is now, it's going to take 17 seconds. So that's kind of a long time. The ultimate cost is still a third of a cent now. I think when I did it with GPT-4, it cost something like over one cent. Uh, so this is still less expensive, but it is slower. Um, but the accuracy hopefully now is also better than just GPT-4 by itself. Um, but reviewing this now, you can see it goes through the Sentinel. The Sentinel basically is a long description of saying, tell me in true or false if this message has any information. And we've got true, so we know it has info. It goes to the memory extractor. So now there's a huge prompt that just describes how to extract memories. It's got uh, format instructions for how to output those. So now we've got memories being outputted here. We go to the memory reviewer next, and this is now gonna be using a Claude Haiku model uh, to review the memories from this message that was sent. And then it analyzes, it does a tool call in which it determines if it is perfect and what the criticism would be that criticism gets passed back to the memory extractor. So it's got long prompt here, the message, and then we tell it, we, here was the previous attempt that you had, make an improvement. And so it makes that improvement. So it'll go back and forth a few times. Ultimately, then it'll go to the action assigner. So we've got this existing um, memory we now need to oops, take what we had with these new memories, compare them, and output the, the new actions. And then the same thing, once we do that, then we output the new categories on top of the actions. So we've got a dislike, don't like coconut products. We're creating that memory, which is a dislike. And then I prefer gluten-free options. That's an attribute, and it's creating that. So that's how it works. I mean, it's going to be a lot more complicated. Things to consider, like this is going to be more brittle. Um, so you need to kind of build some redundancies into it and figure out how, you know, what your failure states look like and how to kind of continue to run these tries. Um, it is gonna be more complicated to manage. You need to make sure your prompts do coordinate with each other. Uh, but the end result is that the accuracy should be higher, the cost should be lower, and you know, the other expense is going to be the speed. So if you have time to allow a lot of this extra thinking, it's worth it. Um, if you're interested in seeing the code, I'll share this in GitHub. Basically set it up with LangGraph. Uh, we can see the graph has these couple of nodes where we've got Sentinel. This is what it's going to determine if there's any information. We've got a memory extractor, memory reviewer, action assigner, category assigner. So each of these will correspond with one of these prompts essentially over here about what actually is going in or going on under the hood. Um, and then, you know, just some conditional edges. It always starts with Sentinel. Sentinel will end if there's no information. If there is, it'll go into the memory extractor. Uh, the memory extractor always goes to the reviewer. The reviewer determines if it should go back to the extractor or move on to the assigner. And the action assigner will always go to the category assigner. Category assigner will always end. So that's basically how the how the graph will work. 
So you can build in the loops if you need to, um, but it's basically going to be calling these things in some sort of a sequence with potentials for loops. Uh, so all that code I'll share in GitHub and I'll share a link if you're interested in seeing it. Um, otherwise, that's it for the demo today. Let me know if you have any thoughts or opinions, but this was honestly like super cool and I'm going to be exploring this much further and I'm interested in learning more about the memory reviewer process. I had some success with it, but I haven't had a ton of success for it or with it, but I have found just this uh, planning step is yielding some really good results. Uh, so let me know if you experiment with this and what you find.